Mark tells the story of Judas, who betrayed Jesus, and the centurion, who betrayed Satan. John Ramirez is a Spanish-American who was a high-ranking satanic priest for most of his life. He dedicated his life to serving Satan and trying to destroy Jesus' work, deceiving people and performing black magic and dark rituals. Hamidis says he hated Jesus. However, John Hamidis had a heavy burden. He lived under threat because he was told that if he left the old coat, Satan would destroy him and his family. But Jesus revealed himself to Hamidis as Lord and Savior. And he was uh, supernaturally delivered from all bondage. And he now preaches the gospel all over the world with this powerful testimony. You know, the Bible says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. That is Isaiah 9. For those who walk in darkness, a son is given. You see that this text of the prophet Isaiah is part of our tradition at Christmas time. A child is born, referring to Jesus. But the passage was written for the Israelites returning to their homeland after years of exile in Babylon. And we, we've seen that this second ex exodus, as we call it, brought them back to Jerusalem. But it follows Four centuries of silence from God. Absolute darkness. But the dark was broken as Jesus came as a baby in Bethlehem. He is the great revelation from God, the great light. It says, on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. As you know, Jesus is the light of the world. Wherever there is a revelation of Jesus, his light will shine powerfully. It doesn't matter who receives this revelation. It doesn't matter who they are, where they live, their lifestyle, their ideology, or, or whom they serve. Jesus revealed himself to a man from a different background, a strange, uh, a strange man, a foreigner. This man, when he saw the glory of Jesus, he betrayed Satan. This man was a centurion, was the centurion of the foot of the cross. A first century centurion was a high-ranking commandant in charge of at least 100 soldiers. And he was serving the Roman Empire. And he was probably responsible for leading the detachment that put Jesus to death. It seems that in the gospel, he was right before the cross, in front of the cross, and saw Jesus dying. At this, he declared, truly, this man was the Son of God. This is the moment of betrayal. The Roman emperor was adored as the Son of God. All Roman citizens had to worship him as the Son of God. For a member of the military, publicly declaring that there is another Son of God, is high treason. I wonder what happened to that centurion he probably faced the death penalty. Matthew says that he was terrified. 
Now, how could a leader of the Roman Empire military be terrified? A man of war who had probably seen so many horrible deaths in his career. And Luke said that he praised God. You see that the revelation of Jesus at the cross was so powerful to that man that he could not help but declare publicly, Jesus is God, and he worshipped him. I believe that the centurion was conscious of what he was saying and knew he would die because of Jesus. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. That centurion declared God's truth because God said to Jesus, You are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. That is in Mark 1. And in Mark 9 it says, This is my beloved son. Listen to him, God said. And Peter received a revelation from God the Father and said to Jesus, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That is in Matthew 16. So the centurion was not the first to make that confession. The difference was that he belonged to an evil kingdom. And we can see that's God's power. He reveals Jesus to different people. The centurion was not a Jew. The only religion he knew was paganism. And his boss, the emperor, was its God. Yet he surrendered himself at the foot of the cross and became a traitor. The faithful message of the cross brings to Jesus the most unexpected kind of people. Paul said, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. That is in Romans 10. I came from a dark place, a tradition that people praise the devil and live in deception. I was out of it in my teenage years when I gave my life to Jesus. From that moment, a shift took place in my life and everything changed. A few words from that centurion brought new life to him. John Hamidis also betrayed Satan's empire. What all these stories have in common is just one thing, the cross. Jesus on the cross. The revelation of God in Jesus. This is the power of Jesus at the cross. A place of death and destruction, but a place of new life and victory. Those who testify that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, died with him at the cross for this world, but now they live. For Satan, Jesus at the cross is a place of his, Satan's own destruction. People who step into the new surrender to Jesus and reject the false and dead religion. They declare that Jesus is Lord and a shift takes place. For those walking in darkness, a son is given. Let me ask you, where are you just now? Will you open your heart to God and start a new life? Let me pray for you. Father, you broke the walls of darkness of that centurion. You brought a revelation to him about who Jesus really was, the Son of God. I pray just now for those who are listening to me, 
those who live in deception and lack peace, hope, and see no future for themselves. I pray that in Jesus' name, a revelation from the Holy Spirit will come right now, knocking down the walls of indifference, destroying the works of the devil in their lives, and make them see and declare, Jesus is Lord, and worship him. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.